And where did you go to school? I graduated from MTSU, you Middle said, Tennessee State University. I was going to say you said that real fast. How long have you worked in the in the healthcare industry? Um, I've worked in my current job for almost three years, and I was in the finance industry for about three years before that. Do you like your current job? I do. Can you tell us um, a little bit about, and I'm, I'm going to, uh, there have been times that you lived with your dad, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Your mom and your dad um, split up, right? Yes. Okay. When you were younger. <clears throat> so, did you ever live with your father at the house in Pembroke? I did. Can you tell the jury about when was that? Um, I moved in, it would have been the summer of, I think, 2012. Um, I moved out probably 2014, I want to say. Where was your bedroom in that house? Downstairs. When you first moved in, um, who else lived in the house? Um, it was my dad, uh, Joan Harmon, and her three kids. You said you moved in in the summer of 2012? Mm -hmm. Yes. When you moved in in the summer of 2012, that wasn't the first time you met Joan. No. We had lived together on other occasions when I was younger, um, spent summers together, um, that kind of thing. So it wasn't anywhere near my first interaction. Were you familiar with her reputation with in the community? Objection, Your yes. Honor. Relevance. Improper question. It's not an improper question. Come on. All right, they're doing the Joan Harmon dance again. The defense wants as much Joan Harmon talk as possible. The prosecution wants none of it. This witness, it is imperative for the defense to get it out that um, Joan Harmon, according to Mackenzie Phillips, the witness on the stand, the daughter of the defendant, at one point said, I will ruin your life and I know how to do it. Mackenzie Bennett heard that comment. The, the defense would love for the jury to hear that comment. It is clearly hearsay. We'll see where this goes. But that's the goal of the defense of bringing on Mackenzie Phillips. I want to ask you some questions about uh, 2012 specifically, okay? Okay. From your personal observations, what was the relationship between your dad and Joan like during that year? Um, I noticed that after I moved in, um, it had become a lot more problematic. There was a lot of arguing at that time. Were you there the night that your father and Joan separated? I was. Can you tell the jury about that night? Um, essentially, there was an argument, and at the conclusion of the argument, I overheard my dad say, you know, to her that he just couldn't handle. Judge, it's not for the truth of the matter. She's talking about what was said during an argument. But to the limited extent that that is her testimony, no explanation, I'll allow that. 
So the judge said that you can tell the jury what you heard your dad say? He stated that he wanted a divorce from her at that time. All right. And what did you hear Joan say in response? Um, Same grounds, Judge. Just uh, overall, go ahead. Do you want to answer that question specifically? She said, if you leave me, I'm sorry. She said, if you leave me, I will ruin your life. I'll ruin your military career. I know how to do it. I'll tell them that you abused me. And then what happened? Um, Dad said that, um, you know, if you think you're being abused, you should call the police. I said, you know what, no, I'll call the police. So at that point, both of them called the police to come out that night. And did the police come out? They did. And what was the result of that? Um, the result was uh, my dad and I left the house um, for that night. And then we um, came back the next day and were advised that we couldn't be there at the house anymore. And how long were you and your dad um, not able to go to the house? I want to say about two to three weeks. Did something happen that changed that after two or three weeks? There was a hearing in Hopkinsville where the judge ultimately decided with my dad and we moved back into the house at that time. Tell the jury uh, what you saw when you got home. When we got back, um, it appeared that just about everything had been taken out of the house. Um, pictures, family heirlooms, um, furniture that wasn't too heavy, everything was gone, animals were gone. Wait, the animals were gone? All of the animals, yeah. Pets and the livestock. Um, we had two German Shepherds at the time, and I believe there were some sheep and some pigs, chickens, that kind of thing, and they were all gone. Your stuff? My stuff was still there. Your dad's stuff? Most, pretty much all of it was gone. And after that, where did things go back to normal? No. What do you mean? Um, things were never, I guess, what you would call normal after that. Um, our tires were getting slashed. Um, there was even an instance where there was a dead animal left in the mailbox for me to find. Um, yeah, it just was pretty crazy. How did all that make you feel? I felt unsafe living there. So what did you do? Um, at first, I moved from at my downstairs bedroom into one of the rooms upstairs. And then um, at, at, in about 2014, I eventually moved out of the house, transferred schools. Since then, have you had a relationship with your father and Laura and the children? Yes. Thank you, Mackenzie. I don't have any further questions.